The health care battle continues in Washington. Who's speaking out in favor of the GOP Senate bill just ahead? Then an investigation into a woman's mysterious death. Why investigators say it's unclear how she died. And get ready for a new experience at the Kennedy Space Center. A look at the newest attraction for the summer of Mars. From News 13, the morning's first news. Traffic and weather together. This is your morning news, weather now. Good Monday morning. The time right now is 6 o'clock. I'm David Bowden, in for Beth Bruce Wall this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's get your day started right away with your weather and traffic together. Real-time traffic expert Ryan Harper will be giving us a look at the roads in just a moment. But first, we want to start off with meteorologist Maureen McCann. Good morning, Maureen. Hey, David, thanks, and good morning. Here at the top of the 6 o'clock hour, we are approaching sunrise with some very warm and muggy conditions to begin our Monday. And we look on the horizon, the FBC Mortgage Weather Cam, you can see some pink and red emerging, a sign of what's in store for the afternoon, showers and thunderstorms. 74 is where we stand right now. Winds are light out of the south, and there isn't rain really on the radar locally on Storm Tracker 13. We'll take you to this perspective, which will feature some uh, showers and thunderstorms out over the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So you may see some lightning off in the distance, a couple of little sprinkles perhaps over eastern Marion County, but not a whole lot of rain to get in the way of the morning commute. Different story for the afternoon, though. Here are your temperatures starting out the day in the mid to upper 70s, even 80 degrees in Leesburg right now. Today, with ample cloud cover, for limited sun early. It's still going to be quite warm and muggy, but we'll find a greater coverage of afternoon showers and storms. I'll explain at 611. Right now it's over to Ryan for our next check of real time traffic. Hey, Ryan. Thank you, Mo. Good morning. Top of the six o'clock hour. Live look outside one of our Department of Transportation cameras in Seminole County. This is I-4, very close to Lake Mary. In fact, we're just down the road from the Lake Mary Boulevard exit there. You're looking east right now, getting closer towards Lake Mary. And at this point, both directions of I-4 still looking very, very nice. And in fact, all of your major roadways are up to speed as you work your way into downtown Orlando. So no significant problems there. We are tracking a minor accident. It looks like along I-95 traveling southbound about a mile before Stateward 50, placing that in the Titusville area of Brevard County. But I'm not seeing a significant backup. There might still be a right lane block there, but it looked like even then it was clearing out. Quick update of your latest updated travel times. Still about six minutes heading into downtown Orlando, beginning back at Conway Road, which is near the Mall Millennia area, all the way through downtown. Six minutes to go about six miles. This update brought to you by Mullinex Ford. Thanks, Ryan. The debate over the Republican health care bill heats up this week. The Congressional Budget Office is expected to release its findings on the bill. Also, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell wants a vote, but GOP leaders are still scrambling to get the support that they need. Today, members of Congress representing Florida are speaking up. News 13 Sarah Belsol reports from Tampa. Representative Kathy Castor will be here today with the American Cancer Society's Cancer Action Network. She says she's going to be sounding the alarm about the restructuring of Medicaid proposed by the Senate Republican health care bill. It's a big week for the Republican health care bill that was revealed last week. Senator Mitch McConnell wants to get the job done, finishing the legislation before the 4th of July break. But some GOP lawmakers say that's not enough time, and they're asking for more. President Donald Donald Trump is optimistic. He said late Sunday night he doesn't think Republicans are that far off on passing the health care overhaul to replace Obamacare. But the legislation has caused a big split in the GOP party. Five Senate Republicans have publicly opposed the bill in its current form. Unless those holdouts can be swayed, the numbers won't be enough to get majority support. But the bill is just devastating, and that's what's that's what's uh, making it so hard for them to pass it. Here's here's what it does: it kills the middle class and gives money to the wealthy. These are not cuts to Medicaid, George. This slows the rate for the future, and it allows governors more flexibility with Medicaid dollars because they're closest to the people in need. Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price voiced support for the bill over the weekend, saying it's only a portion of what the Republicans are planning for their health care reform. On scene in Tampa, Sarah Belsol, News 13. 
We now know the name of the woman who was found dead near some railroad tracks in Apopka. Deputies found the body of 28-year-old Tina Pocasangre Lopez around 4.30 Sunday morning along East 13th Street. Now at this point, it's unclear how she died and investigators say they saw no signs of trauma on her body. An autopsy will be performed to determine the exact cause of death. Daytona Beach police arrest a man who they say stole a boat and that ended up slamming into a local beach. Now, beach safety officials say the boat was discovered just after 11 Saturday morning near the Silver Beach approach. Viewers sent us these pictures. Now, police arrested Jonathan Race after, th after that incident. He faces two burglary charges and a charge of grand theft. Today, this man, who investigators say shot a nurse at a Marion County Hospital, will face a judge. 38-year-old Jason Gignac is being charged with resisting without violence. Now, FHP spotted Gignac walking along I-75 back on June 17th. He told troopers he felt sick, so they took him to West Marion Community Hospital. After being treated, troopers tried to take him into custody. There was a struggle, and investigators say Gignac fired a shot from an FHP gun. The bullet hit a nurse in the leg. The British government is urging officials across the country to submit samples of cladding from high-rise buildings. Now, this comes after a fire engulfed Grenfell Tower in London earlier this month, killing at least 79 people. So far, at least 34 samples from different buildings failed fire safety standards. A public inquiry has also been ordered to determine just how unsafe that cladding was allowed to be put on the building in the first place. Takata is expected to file for bankruptcy protection this week. Now, last month, automakers reached a preliminary settlement to compensate owners of vehicles that have the Takata airbags recalled in their vehicles. Now, that airbags are blamed for at least 16 deaths, including one right here in Orlando, and 180 injuries worldwide. The company says the cost of the airbag crisis put it under. Most of the company's assets will be sold to a rival company for $1.6 billion. Today, Governor Rick Scott is expected to appoint one of his most steadfast supporters to serve as Florida's next chief financial officer. Jimmy Petronas is former Republican state representative from Panama City, who currently serves as one of Scott's appointees to the Public Service Commission. Now, he will join Governor for a three-city statewide fly-around to celebrate his ascension to one of the state's most powerful offices. He'll serve out the final 18 months of departing CFO Jeff Atwater's term. Atwater is leaving to take a job at COF at Florida Atlantic University. Three, two, one, liftoff. We have a liftoff. Destination space and the destination today is Mars, a new fully immersive experience to make it feel like you're on the surface of the red planet officially opens today at the Kennedy Visitor Space Center. News 13's Jerry Hume joins us now live at the Visitor Complex this morning. And Jerry, this is all a part of the Lockheed Martin Mars Experience bus. Yeah, David, this bus has uh, been traveling across the country, 12 cities, 33 stops, uh, giving kids and visitors quite the experience. It's no ordinary bus, makes you feel like you're actually on the uh, surface of Mars. 200 square miles of the Martian landscape are replicated with some very high-tech virtual reality technology. Teresa Brown works for Lockheed Martin as part of a, the Orion spacecraft program. And Teresa, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Can you Tell us, uh, this looks like a lot of fun, but we were told that this is a pretty serious goal for Lockheed Martin. Explain. Yes, thank you for having me. So Lockheed Martin is using this as a tool to inspire our next generation of uh, engineers. Projections show that the first human to step foot on Mars is currently in grade school. So Lockheed Martin is using this as an outreach to get these students excited about STEM careers to become our next uh, astronauts and engineers to get humanity to Mars. Lockheed Martin is the prime contractor for the Orion space uh, craft, which uh, hopefully one day will send humans to Mars. Uh, you work on it. What's the latest with it? 
All right, so we had a, a successful flight article called EFT-1, and currently at the Kennedy Space Center, we're working on Exploration Mission 1, building up that crew module for our next flight in 2019. And we're all looking forward to that. Thank you so much, Thank Teresa, you. for joining us. Want to let you know that uh, this bus will be here at the visitor complex for the next three months as a part of the park's Summer of Mars celebration. We hope to go on in the next hour. We were hoping this hour, but uh, we hope uh, to get back on in the next hour and show you some of uh, the fun things you can see on board at 7 o'clock. But for now, reporting live here at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, Jerry Hume, News 13. And we'll look forward to that next visit with you, Jerry. In other space news, a SpaceX rocket lifts off from California in the second of two launches over the weekend. Three, two, one. The Falcon 9 rocket blasted off at 425 Eastern Time Sunday afternoon. It carried 10 communication satellites into orbit. SpaceX also landed the first stage booster on a vessel in the Pacific after the launch. Three, two, one. And on Friday, a Falcon 9 successfully launched from Cape Canaveral. It carried a communication satellite from Bulgaria into orbit. And your time right now is 6.10. Let's turn it over to Ryan Harper with some traveling here on the terra firma. How's it going in that morning commute, Ryan? <laughs> Yeah, we'll actually start you off about 800 feet up in the sky, uh, David. Good morning here. About 6.11, your current time as you take a look at these live pictures from Sky 13. Still pretty dark outside, but they give you an idea of what's going on near the attractions area. So far, so good. The I-4 corridor in general looking very, very nice. A lot of green out there. It's what we like to see this time of uh, the morning. In terms of accidents, they're far and few between. We're tracking a very minor one. I-95 southbound, about a mile before Stayward 50 in the Titusville area. There may still be a left lane block here, but it really hasn't made an impact impact enough to cause any sort of delay whatsoever. Quick update on Stateward 408. If your travels take you westbound into downtown Orlando, as you would expect from seeing all that green, all three of these areas are currently up to speed. So from the 417, the Greenway Interchange, all the way through downtown, about seven minutes to go about seven miles at this point. This update brought to you by Mullinex Ford. Over to our weather center now with meteorologist Maria McCann. And Mo, it was a very, very hot weekend, at least here in Central Florida. What can we expect as we begin a new work week? No break from the heat and humidity and we'll actually find increasing rain chances compared to what we had Saturday and Sunday. Most of the storms developed later on in the evening with the sea breeze collisions. Today it'll be a different scenario that will fuel more numerous areas of rain. We can kind of tell by the look of the horizon. I always say this, but weather folklore tells us red sky morning, sailors take warning. So just a precursor to the threat of stronger storms later on. 74 degrees now, but no rain in the area. Bring the rain gear with you, though, when you leave the house because you may need to pull it out for the afternoon and early evening hours. Temperatures are beginning the day in the mid to upper 70s. Leesburg, clearly the warmest spot. It's been at 80 there all morning. Today you'll climb to around 90, but here comes that chance for rain pretty much playing a role in every hour right through sunset. Sunrise will be at 630 this morning, and we're finding some pretty decent views. Fog is not getting in the way, but it definitely is hazy. This is over in Cocoa Beach Shepherd Park, I believe. The yeah, conditions there looking a little bit hazy. Also, our camera right here in Lake County, the uh, Jenkins Hyundai Leesburg Sky Cam in Claremont showing good visibility, but it's very warm and muggy. Today, those temperatures are going to reach the uh, mid to upper 80s at lunchtime, low 90s at 2 o'clock, and that's when Storm Tracker 13 will become more active. But there's not a whole lot going on right now other than showers and thunderstorms just approaching the Gulf of Mexico. Some lightning may be visible off in the distance, but we'll see things become more active over land after we uh, get past lunchtime. Now this morning there may be a stray shower. This high resolution view of Storm Tracker 13 is pretty optimistic of that. I say after two, three o'clock as thunderstorms get going on the western side of the peninsula, they will slowly travel north and east back over to the east coast beaches containing some very heavy rain, especially because these cells will not be traveling very fast. So 92 degrees, scattered showers and storms followed by uh, lingering rain rain. Storms winding down early tomorrow. They return again. Numerous showers and storms boosting that rain chance to 80% for tomorrow. I'll have more details coming up at 621, David. Thanks so much, Maureen. Another year for St. Pete Pride is in the books. Why organizers say the event was a huge success. Coming up, you're watching News 13. We'll be right back.
For news and weather at your fingertips, go to MyNews13.com. More news, less clutter, exclusively from Spectrum. This hurricane season, you've got a powerhouse in your corner. Storm Tracker 13. These storms popping up fast, moving even faster. Only News 13 has Storm Tracker 13. Always okay. tracking yeah, storms, giving you minute by minute information. It's going to be off the coast by 3 a.m. Delivering technology that gives you time to prepare and keeps you safe. You definitely want to take precautions. Storm Tracker 13, the most powerful name this hurricane season, is on News 13, exclusively on Spectrum. Come light up the savings at Hyundai's 4th of July sales event. Now lease a new 2017 Tucson for just $149 a month for 24 months. Or get 0.9% APR financing for 60 months on a new Santa Fe with standard third row seating. All backed by America's best warranty. Come light up the savings during the 4th of July sales event. Better is the reason to buy Hyundai. And here's another reason to buy now. Save like never before on the Santa Fe Sport. Right now lease for $169 a month. Or get up to $6,000 in total savings. Hurry. Offers end July 5th. I'm Todd Miner. When I was an attorney for the largest auto insurance company in the country, I handled hundreds of cases. So whenever I hear someone talk about how much they received for their injury case, I always ask myself, how much was that case really worth? Look, before hiring an attorney, sit down with me for a free, honest, and accurate evaluation of your case. And remember, everything I learned on their side, I bring to your side. Call me or visit ToddMinerLaw.com. Here's something you don't think about too often, your toilet. Each day your toilet could be wasting over 200 gallons of water. We've created a solution to this problem. The Guard Dog Valve monitors your toilet using motion sensor technology and four AA batteries to save you water and money. For more information, visit our website, GuardDogValves.com. News 13 is brought to you by Budget You Pull It. Save money on used auto parts at BudgetYouPullIt.com. Florida Lottery is brought to you by 1-800-TRIAL-PRO. Don't just hire an attorney, hire a trial professional. St. Pete's Pride Weekend wrapped up with a festival that took over downtown, and organizers say it might be their biggest one yet. While there's no final tally, an estimated 50,000 people attended Sunday's Pride Festival. It was a time for the LGBTQ community to celebrate with plenty of support from friends and local businesses. The festival drew over people from all over and the shops across the state as well. People want to show, hey, we're part of the community, we're a big part of the community, we're a big part of the world. So treat us like we belong in the world. The festival was the final formal event of the St. Pete's Pride Month. Pride celebrations took place around the world over the weekend. Crowds in New York City gathered in Manhattan to celebrate equality. They marched down Fifth Avenue with their signs, and this was the scene in Toronto. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also took part. He made history last year being the first Prime Minister to participate in a Pride event. Meanwhile, hundreds of people filled the streets of Chicago. Some marched with signs as others watched the parade from the sidelines. The first Pride Parade was held in 1970, one year after the violent Stonewall riots. Today marks the last day of the Supreme Court session before justices head off to summer break. What big talking points are on their agenda coming up? And are people suffering from mental health disorders being prescribed too many painkillers? Coming up next, how researchers are finding a new link to the opioid epidemic. And now it's time to turn things over to weather. Maureen, we saw some rain this weekend. I heard some storms late last night. Are we expecting any severe weather today? There will be another round of thunderstorms, David, and some of them could be strong. Heavy rain is going to be the biggest threat, though. I'll explain coming up in your Weather on the Ones. Love it. Hate it. Or just... Whoa! Connect with News 13 on Facebook. Is your business still struggling with expensive and outdated internet and phone from AT&T? 
I can't stand waiting for files to download. Slow internet, slow business. Switch to Spectrum Business Internet and get starting speeds up to 10 times faster than AT&T for less. It's just $59.99 a month. Call 855-339-5311. I would ditch AT&T in a second, but gotta keep my phone number. Get Spectrum Business Voice and keep your number and phones. Only $29.99 a month with unlimited long distance. My service keeps cutting out. I just want service that works. Spectrum Business delivers over 99.9% .9 network reliability and saves you money. Stop settling for less from AT&T. Switch to Spectrum Business and get 60 meg internet for only $59.99 when bundled with voice for $29.99. And no contracts. Call 855-339-5311. Come light up the savings at Hyundai's 4th of July sales event. Now, get up to $67.50 in total savings on a new Sonata. That's 25% off MSRP. Or up to $47.50 total savings on an Elantra. Or lease for $119 a month. All backed by America's best warranty. Come light up the savings during the 4th of July sales event. Better is the reason to buy Hyundai. And here's another reason to buy now. Save like never before on a new Sonata. Right now, get up to $67.50 in total savings. Hurry, offers end July 5th. Imagine being injured in a car accident and even undergoing surgery and then watching the insurance company's doctor look the jury right in the eyes and testify that you weren't injured from the accident. As a former insurance attorney for the largest auto insurance company in the country, I can tell you that it happens all the time. So if you've been injured in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident, sit down with me for a free consultation and let me use everything I learned on the insurance side to help you on your side. Call me or visit ToddMinerLaw.com. Stay on top of what's happening in your neighborhood. An update now for you coming into the News 13 newsroom. Of Follow News 13 on Twitter. Your accurate weather experts forecast with Storm Tracker 13. Hi everyone, 21 past the hour. I'm meteorologist Maureen McCann, starting out warm and muggy for our Monday morning, but plan on an unsettled afternoon with showers and thunderstorms becoming more numerous and boaters that will impact you, especially for the inland lakes later on in the day. Storm motion will be back over to the east coast and that will impact the beaches. So make sure you have news 13 plus on your phone if you did want to venture out today. That goes for anything you're doing outside, not just being out on the boat. We we have plenty of moisture available to fuel our showers and thunderstorms. You know that by turning to the water vapor loop. And there's this ribbon of moisture off to the north of us with a decaying cold front that is going to contribute to our rain chances for today. Even before lunchtime, there may be some spotty showers around, but the better chance will be during the afternoon. If anyone gets any sun for the first part of the day, it would be quite limited. The better chance will be during the afternoon for showers and thunderstorms to flare up, and some of them may contain some very heavy rainfall. They'd be slow moving, so one to two inches, not out of the question. Very much like what we had over the weekend with the uh, sea breeze collisions taking shape, and that enabled thunderstorms to develop later on in the day and into the evening hours. Slow moving with heavy rain, and these ones would be no different, especially around the evening commute. The I-95 corridor, I-4 to the north of Orlando, could be pretty active out there with some stronger cells, but everything will diminish with the loss of daytime heating. Time for your county-by-county county forecast, which we always bring you here at 21 past the hour. And our temperatures are still going to be hot despite the clouds and the threat of rain, and it will feel even hotter than these readings because of the humidity factored in. So you'll be around 90 or so across Brevard County, likewise in Osceola County, where lower 90s will be on hand, but you may be cooled off by showers and storms later on in the day. In Seminole County, good chance for late day rain. You'll be at or above 90 and some low 90s on the way. Astor, Eustis and Claremont in Marion Lake and Sumter counties. Last stop brings us back to Orange County, where we'll be in the lower 90s once again. Rain chances in the 60 to 70 percent range or even up to 80 percent by tomorrow. For, for much of this week, it's going to be a unsettled week, a lot of cloud cover, afternoon rain, and very muggy conditions too. We really don't see any drastic changes in this through the remainder of the week. So you want to get out early to do things outside because the better chance for rain will be during the afternoon and early evening hours. Overnight lows will be very consistent this week. 
ranging in the middle 70s. Here's a quick check of your pollen forecast. The rain keeping levels low for the next couple of days. We'll head over to Ryan now for traffic. I'll be back in less than 10 minutes and we'll get a live look at Storm Tracker 13 Doppler radar. Good Monday morning, 624 your current time. I'm Ryan Harper with a check of your real time traffic. We were checking in live with Sky 13. They were flying over the St. John's River Bridge and so far so good over that specific area right now near that Volusia County, Seminole County line. Looks like we might have a minor wreck uh, just uh, east of there. Looks like they were trying to check that out there as well, but I'm not seeing a big concern. It's a little bit of delay so far. No delays whatsoever heading through downtown Orlando on the I-4 corridor. Everything looking good, at least for right now. We're still tracking the remains of a minor wreck that may still be blocking a left lane along I-95 traveling southbound just before State Road 50. That's in the Titusville area of Brevard County. But again, taking a look at our traffic sensors so far, that green coloration represents traffic that is currently up at speed with no major delays to report there. So good news there. This update brought to you by Mullinex Ford. Recent studies show a link between higher rates of opioid use and mental health disorders. Doctors say people who suffer from depression or anxiety are consuming too many prescription painkillers. Researchers found that nearly 19% of people with those two most common mental health disorders received at least two prescriptions for opioids during a year. And more than half of the prescriptions were highly addictive painkillers. Experts say people suffering from a mental health disorder may report a, a pain a lot different than those without a disorder. As a result, doctors may tend to overprescribe opioid painkillers. The study was published in the Journal for the American Board of Family Medicine. At the box office, good news and bad news for the latest Transformers movie. It snagged the number one spot this weekend. Transformers The Last Night grossed $45.3 million, a huge jump from its competitors, but it's the lowest debut weekend ever for the Transformers franchise. And it's a tie for second place this week. Cars 3 made an estimated $25.2 million in its opening weekend. And Wonder Woman stays in the top three. The first superhero film led by a woman also brought in an estimated $25.2 million. Remember, you can keep track of all of this summer's biggest hits with our box office scorecard. Just head over to mynews13.com slash filmbuff. Meet Martha. <laughs> she was crowned the world's ugliest dog over the weekend. The droopy-faced 125-pound rescue dog beat out 13 other pets for the title in California. According to her handler, Martha is, quote, a drooling, snoring, loud, and silly girl. Martha won a $1,500 check and a trophy, plus a trip to New York City. Just ahead on News 13, a boat sinks in Columbia with 150 people on board. We're following the search for survivors. Then, one part of Claremont is rapidly growing, but it's creating trouble on the roads, where neighbors say they want to see changes. You're watching News 13, available only on Spectrum. News 13 is brought to you by Budget You Pull It. Save money on used auto parts at BudgetYouPullIt.com. When you purchase or own a home needing work, All In Construction can help make that almost perfect home a dream with All In Construction. And stay tuned to learn how to roll renovation costs directly into your mortgage. Call All In Construction, your home renovation experts. People ask me, what's the difference between pest prevention and pest control? It's simple. Pest control involves applying pesticides inside and outside your home, whether needed or not. At Massey Services, we just don't do that. We focus on eliminating conditions outside your home to keep pests from getting inside. I believe in it so much, it's exactly what I do for my family. That's Massey Services. Expect more and get it. All across America, more people are choosing Nissan. America's best sales event at Nissan, the fastest growing auto brand in the USA. Take on every day and get a low $189 per month lease on Altima or save up to $10,760 on select models. Get to your local Nissan dealer today. At the trial professionals, 
We protect car accident victims every day. We fight hard to protect our clients and their families. When I got into an accident, I was out of work for about a week, and they, they reimbursed me for everything. They helped me out, and they also made sure that I was taken care of. You know, I felt very good about everything, and I was able to you know, continue my life like actually nothing happened. If you've been injured, let our team of experienced trial professionals help you and your family. Call 1-800-TRIAL-PRO. When you purchase or own a home needing work, finance the renovations with FBC Mortgage. FBC can roll your home renovation costs directly into your mortgage. Call FBC today to find out how. FBC Mortgage, your renovation financing experts. Learn about Florida's climate and explore the science behind the weather. Go to mynews13.com slash project weather. The search is on for survivors after a boat carrying 150 people sinks in Colombia. This morning, we're seeing eyewitness accounts of the rescue. Then this man could be locked up for decades today. What prosecutors say he did to his boyfriend that landed him behind, behind bars. And growth in Lake County leads to some trouble on the roads. What people in Claremont want to see done to keep them safe. From News 13, the morning's first news. Traffic and weather together. This is your morning news, weather now. Good morning, the time now is 6.30. I'm David Bowden, in for you Beth Bruce Wall this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's get your day started right away with your weather and traffic together. We'll get to weather in just a moment, but we've got some breaking news over with the first time for our real-time traffic expert, Ryan Harper. Thank you, David. Good morning. 631, your current time. Sky 13 just arrived on scene here in Volusia County, where a stretch of I-4 looks like it's been completely shut down near Saxon Boulevard. So it looks like the crash is going to be just past Saxon Boulevard itself. You can see all the vehicles involved there. It looks like emergency vehicles are on scene. Some stretchers are involved here. So some injuries are certainly in the picture for right now. So let's take a look at where that crash specifically is in Volusia County. You can see all the congestion past Saxon Boulevard. You might be forced to exit off on a Saxon and from there you can take maybe even 1792 off to the west as an I-4 westbound alternate maybe down to Dirksen Drive or from there you can reconnect with I-4 traveling westbound but again at least for right now it looks like all of your lanes are currently blocked I-4 westbound just past Saxon Boulevard traffic may be being forced off on a Saxon Boulevard at this point. This update brought to you by Mullinax Ford over to our weather center now with meteorologist Marie McKenna. Mo hopefully you have some better news from the skies this morning. Yeah, the weather is not going to interfere with your morning commute. We have good visibility and the sun's coming up now. Got a lot of clouds overhead, but no rain falling in the metro area. Things are going to change later on, though. We'll get into a better chance for showers and storms this afternoon. Here's a look at your current temperatures. We're in the mid to upper 70s to near 80 degrees. Leesburg remains the warmest spot right at 80. And there's no rain locally other than maybe a sprinkle in Marion County. There have been some showers along the Gulf Coast. Those will build and cover along the I-75 corridor by midday and eventually growing coverage across the entire peninsula. So it's a better chance of rain today. Beaches too, so you need to be prepared to seek shelter in the event you get caught in one of those showers or thunderstorms. Poor overall for surfing with wave heights in the range of about one to two feet. Got your tide times right here, Daytona Beach and Cocoa Beach. Stay with us for more weather on the ones. I'll have travel weather when I'm back inside coming up at 641. A tourist boat in Colombia suddenly sinks, leaving at least six people dead this morning. And search and rescue crews efforts for the dozens uh, still in the water are still ongoing. News 13's web anchor Caitlin Jones joins us now from the studio. And Caitlin, you, you saw video and images from that scene, and they've all started spreading online. Yeah, they've really been circulating. We had so many images like this one online because the boat was so close to land. So people were able to get these images. Now this happened with 170 people or so on board this boat in Guatape. That's a little bit outside of Medellin, about 28 miles. And that's when the boat just started taking on water. Some people captured it on video. This person said without a doubt the most horrific scene I have witnessed in my life. This four story boat eventually just starts going underwater 
water from uh, from this incident. You can see dozens of people are racing out on their personal boats and jet skis, rescuers trying to get there as quickly as possible. Some people say that there were even no life jackets, no life vest on the boat when it started sinking. So we have they have confirmed now six people are dead this morning. 31 people still missing. At one point they had to call off the search and rescue efforts overnight because of storms in the area, but they are said to begin again as soon as they see the first sign of daylight. So those search and rescue efforts should be beginning very soon. The president of Colombia, Juan Manuel Santos, posted on Twitter as he visited the area. We regret the deaths caused by the wreck of Guatape. Our solidarity with all relatives accompany them in their pain. And as this search and rescue effort does get underway again this morning, we'll continue to update you in the next hour in the Web Center. I'm Caitlin Jones. Convicted killer Zachary Berry will learn his fate today. Earlier this year, a jury convicted Berry of second degree murder in the death of his boyfriend, Richard Keppel, back in 2015. Authorities believe that Berry killed Keppel over money and drugs. Now, Berry was 17 when the murder happened, but he was charged as an adult. He faces decades behind bars when he's sentenced later today. Jury selection starts today for the former drug company CEO known as the most hated man in America. Martin Shkreli is known for hiking up the price of an AIDS and cancer treatment by 5,000% in 2015. He's accused of illegally transferring money from one of his companies to another to pay off debts. Shkreli was arrested in New York and charged back in December of 2015. Today is the last day of the current Supreme Court session. That means cases that the justices don't rule on by the end of the day will have to wait until after the summer break. That's the biggest item on the, the agenda is the Trump administration's proposed travel ban, which would block travel from six Muslim majority countries. We'll be keeping an eye on the high court today and we'll let you know what happens. At least 153 people are dead and dozens more seriously hurt after an oil tanker truck explodes in Pakistan. Now, the tanker apparently went off the road and overturned. Then villagers rushed to the scene to collect leaking oil. That's when the truck burst into flames. Authorities are still investigating that accident. Many Muslims in Central Florida came out to celebrate the end of Ramadan. More than 6,000 Muslims gathered at the Eid in Orlando on Sunday. During Ramadan, Muslims fast between sunrise and sundown and perform acts of charity for their neighbors and the community. We prayed, we asked for forgiveness, we became more God conscious, we helped the needy, we fed the hungry, we did lots of good activities to get closer to God, to earn His blessings. There are more than 1.6 billion Muslims across the globe. More than 60,000 live here in Orlando. In this week's Traffic Inbox, our real-time traffic expert, Ryan Harper, made his way over to a rapidly expanding area in Lake County. Now, that's where the infrastructure there might not be so ready for rapid growth. Right, Ryan? Yeah, that's right, David. I went to the Claremont area because Rudy wrote in saying this week, I'd really like you to take a look at Hartwood Marsh Road. The road is wide enough, and usually during the morning and afternoon hours, and sometimes on the weekends, the traffic is a disaster. Is any help coming? So upon reading that, we sought out what the conditions look like now and what may be coming next. Hartwood Marsh Road runs through both Orange and Lake Counties, but it's the Lake County side that we were asked to take a look at. Our first impressions were that it was indeed a very narrow road for the amount of traffic, but the overall congestion, at least during the late morning hours, wasn't all that bad. However, there were signs everywhere that residents are fed up with the amount of congestion during peak times. Take, for example, the Hartwood Pines community near Hancock Road. One resident who wished not to appear on camera directed us to one of the entrance gates that led to Hartwood Marsh Road. It's been completely closed off. According to the resident, traffic gets so bad on Hartwood Marsh Road that cars would use the community as a cut-through just to avoid traveling any further on the road. 
We also noticed that this road will not be able to handle the amount of congestion that is in store for the area. We counted at least four new home communities that are under construction just along Hartwood Marsh Road itself within a span of about a mile. So what's next for the stretch of Hardwood Marsh Road? Well, as of right now, officials have only made minor changes, including putting in signage and a crosswalk here in front of the South Lake Imagine School here. A traffic signal was also installed at the intersection of Hancock Road, but officials also have bigger things in mind for the area. Lake County also told us that this road has been on their radar back as far as 2004 with a widening project that was approved in 2010. However, we were also told that funding has not been appropriated yet for right of way acquisition or the construction itself. Thanks for your question, Rudy. And if you at home have a traffic issue or a question that you want to look at, go to mynews13.com slash traffic inbox and just fill out the simple form. David? A very big problem for those folks there. And you're following a very big problem right now. You've got some breaking traffic news. Absolutely, David. As of right now, I-4 traveling westbound is currently closed because of a pretty serious wreck involving some entrapment uh, past Saxon Boulevard here at this uh, particular exit in Volusia County. So it's a few miles before at St. John's River Bridge area. I recommend for the meantime, if you can exit off at Saxon Boulevard, maybe even before that, use 1792 as your alternate. These are live pictures from Sky 13. They're on scene. You can see all the emergency vehicles that are on scene there. We saw some stretchers being taken into ambulances just about to five to ten minutes ago, so it looks like there may be some injuries involved with this specific accident. We can surmise that, but for right now, again, you're going to have to avoid I-4 traveling westbound. You might want to exit before Saxon Boulevard if you can, and again, use 1792 as your I-4 westbound alternate. Maybe to around Dirksen Road, or you maybe even take that as far south as even the Sanford area there instead. This update brought to you by Mullinax Ford. Over to our weather center now with meteorologist Marie McKenna. Hopefully you have some better news for us regarding today's weather. Well, we do have a nice sunrise taking shape right now. It technically came up about 630, but the colors look great over downtown Orlando, especially when you combine the rising sun with the clouds overhead. This is the FBC Mortgage Weather Cam looking over Lake Eola. It's very warm and humid, though. We have middle 70s. Winds are out of the south. Temperatures have been around 80 all morning long in Leesburg and just under that for Sanford and for Melbourne. Daytona Beach checking in with 77 degrees right now and 77 also for Kissimmee. Ocala, 75 and Marion County. Showers and thunderstorms will enter the picture after lunchtime. But even before then, you may get a stray shower. Temperatures will still have no problem warming to near 90 degrees or so, but that rain-cooled air will be around for the afternoon. Here's what we have for road hazards this morning, or lack thereof, because there isn't much showing up. We have enough of a breeze to prevent fog from forming, so visibility is not an issue. If you are traveling maybe towards Tampa or anywhere along the Gulf Coast, that's where you have a slightly better chance of experiencing some rain this morning, but moisture will increase in advance of this front that you see over North Florida. That is going to be uh, driving up our rain chances for the next several days. Just lots of moisture available. Add in a little bit of daytime heating. It'll make it easy for showers and thunderstorms to flare up. Elsewhere, we have some rain across parts of the Midwest and the Central Plains. Also around this area, low pressure slowly moving through the Great Lakes with some much cooler weather in that part of the country. Feeling like fall with 60s and 70s showing up in the forecast for Cleveland and Chicago. Meanwhile, 80s across the southeast due to the increased threat of rain. Travel delays really not showing up, so that is a good thing for those heading to the airport early on this Monday morning. All the major hubs are in pretty good shape. Same with local travel. No weather related issues early, but be prepared for widespread areas of rain during the afternoon. Some of that may be locally heavy. Tonight, 75 degrees with lingering showers and thunderstorms and tomorrow be around 90 with another round of rain. In fact, this whole week looks pretty unsettled. You'll see it reflected in the rain chances, which I'll show you at 651 with your seven day forecast, David. All right, thanks so much. Tim Tebow mania is coming to Central Florida, where you'll soon be able to watch the former Florida football star Tim Tebow play minor league baseball. That's coming up next. We'll be right back. You're watching Central Florida's only 24 hour. News 13 is brought to you by Budget You Pull It. Save money on used auto parts at budgetupullit.com. Orange County, $1 million. Okeechobee County, $3.15 million. We will not be pushed around, and we will fight for every dollar that you're entitled to. Call us or visit our website, martinezmanglardi.com. We are here to help.
If you have questions, Spectrum makes it easy to find the answers. That's why we offer more ways to get help. So if you need answers, we've got you covered. You can find support, useful tips, and answers to commonly asked questions by visiting spectrum.net slash easy tips. So the next time you have a question, remember, finding the solution can be as simple as watching a video or visiting our website. Any questions? The Honda 4th of July sales event is here with great deals on the 2017 Honda Civic and 2017 Honda Accord. Celebrate KBB.com's 2017 Best Value brand at the Honda 4th of July sales event. Happening now at your Honda dealer. This is great. Both of us camping. I feel like a cub again. You thought of everything. The tent, the campfire, the marshmallows, a couch... Living room camping is not exactly roughing it. Bears don't sleep in the woods, you know. Actually, yes. Yes, they do. Why sweat outdoors when you can relax indoors? One Stop Cooling and Heating knows a comfortable home is a bare necessity. So if your AC goes out, call One Stop Cooling and Heating immediately. Proud provider of Goodman. Careful, honey. You're flammable. Oh. Osceola County, $1 million. Pinellas County, $6 million. We will not be pushed around, and we will fight for every dollar that you're entitled to. Call us or visit our website, martinezmanglardi.com. We are here to help. Love it, hate it, or just, whoa. Connect with News 13 on Facebook. Weather now, exclusively on Spectrum. The Tim Tebow Baseball Show is coming to Kissimmee. The Mets promoted Tebow to St. Lucie in the Florida State League, meaning the former Heisman Trophy winner is scheduled to play at Osceola County Stadium in late July. Great finish on the PGA Tour Sunday at the Travelers Championship in Connecticut. Jordan Spieth and Daniel Berger in a playoff. First extra hole, Spieth from the bunker. He holds it for the win. Tenth PGA Tour victory for Spieth. He and Tiger, the only players with double-digit wins before their 24th birthday. NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series at the road course in Sonoma, California. Danica Patrick slams into her boyfriend, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. The crash would end his day. California native Kevin Harvick takes the checkered flag under caution for his first win of the year. Next up for NASCAR is the Coke Zero 400 at Daytona. I'm Austin Lyon, and that's your Toyota Sports Minute on News 13. Our county-by-county county coverage continues in Osceola County, where volunteers are getting ready to move 30 big cats from Coco to St. Cloud. The Central Florida Animal Reserve takes care of felines that were confiscated by FWC or turned in by their owners who didn't want to take care of them anymore. The move from Coco to St. Cloud will make the reserve six times bigger. The nonprofit is still fighting to reach a goal of $25,000 for the move. Now, the cats are expected to move to St. Cloud by the end of the summer summer. And neighbors in one part of Lake County are under a boil water notice. Groveland City leaders say to boil water before brushing your teeth, cleaning or cooking. No word on what actually caused the notice, but it requires residents to boil water for the next 24 to 48 hours. To see all of the areas in Groveland affected, head over to our website at mynews13.com. Florida leads the nation in the number of people killed by lightning strikes. Lightning killed 52 people in Florida since January 2007. That's the most in the country, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Texas came in second with 21 deaths during that same time period. Prince Harry says he once wanted out of the British royal family. In a recent interview, the prince said the time he spent in the army was the best escape he ever had and that he once considered giving up his title. The comments followed an interview published in Newsweek where he said he didn't think anyone in the royal family wanted to be king or queen. Prince Harry is the fifth in line to the throne. Central Florida had its share of showers and thunderstorms over the weekend, and as the new work week begins, we're in for more rain and storms. I'll explain coming up in your weather on the ones. 
faster warnings, accurate forecasts. Storm Tracker 13, part of the largest Doppler radar network in the Southeast. Only on News 13, exclusively on Spectrum. Hi, I'm Betsy for Orlando Hyundai. It's our 4th of July celebration event. Save up to 10,000 off new Hyundais and get 0% APR for 72 months. Hurry now, only at Orlando's number one volume dealer. Visit OrlandoHyundai.com. Bad weather can happen at any time. That's why you need a radar that's on all the time. We have a lot more weather coming in over the next couple of hours. Storm Tracker 13, part of the largest Doppler network in the southeast. Tracking storms with more detail, more accuracy, and the only live radar showing you what's coming your way whenever and wherever you go. Keep track of the storms just like we do here. That's the reason more people are turning to News 13 for weather. Storm Tracker 13, let it rain. How would you like to triple your money this summer? What? It's the Triple Your Rebate Summer at Universal Nissan. Triple your rebate on your new car purchase. $1,000 rebate, we make it three. $2,000 rebate, we make it up to 6000 Nissan Sentra. Only $119 a month. 0% now available. Now, just $13,987. Triple your rebate today at Universal Nissan and UniversalNissan.com. Now that's truly the better place to buy. At the Trial Professionals, we protect car accident victims every day. We fight hard to protect our clients and their families. When I got into an accident, I was out of work for about a week, and they, they reimbursed me for everything. They helped me out, and they also made sure that I was taken care of. You know, I felt very good about everything, and I was able to you know, continue my life like actually nothing happened. If you've been injured, let our team of experienced trial professionals help you and your family. Call 1-800-TRIAL-PRO. Betsy for Orlando Hyundai. It's our 4th of July celebration event. Save up to 10,000 off new Hyundais and get 0% APR for 72 months. Hurry now, only at Orlando's number one volume dealer. Visit OrlandoHyundai.com. When you're on the go, watch News 13 anywhere with the Spectrum TV app. Download now and watch News 13 instantly on your device. This is a Storm Tracker 13 tropical update. Tropical update time here with your weather on the ones as we always do at 51 minutes past the hour. It is much quieter in the Atlantic Basin this morning compared to last week when we were monitoring two name systems. So we have now checked off Brett and Cindy. Dawn would be next, followed by Emily. Hopefully we don't hear from them, certainly here in Florida. But that's the tropical update is for to always keep you posted here once an hour on the latest developments, both in the Atlantic and also with the Pacific. Now we're rounding out the month of June. Typically, we turn to the Gulf and the Northwestern Caribbean for early development. When we transition to July, that breeding ground expands and includes a greater area over the Atlantic Basin, the more favored spots for development, not only the Gulf, but also the Western Atlantic and the Central Atlantic with storm motion typically to the Northwest and oftentimes those storms can impact Florida, which is why we got to watch Storm Tracker 13 very closely. Now the one system that we have on Storm Tracker 13 is technically in the Pacific. This is Dora moving away from Mexico, now a hurricane, but everything else across the Caribbean. Gulf of Mexico is quiet. Same with these waves moving westward across the Atlantic. They just don't seem to be materializing or spinning up into a tropical cyclone. So we are not expecting any new development, at least for the next two to five days. Now, locally, it's tropical moisture playing a role in our Monday weather. We have this dying out front to the north of us, ample moisture to the south, and that's going to fuel our numerous areas of rain and storms for the next several days. We can watch that happen on Storm Tracker 13. There's that deep source of moisture blanketing the peninsula, and it doesn't really go anywhere through the middle to latter part of the week. So as long as we have this type of air mass in place, it will give rise to showers and thunderstorms. Some of them may contain some torrential rain. Now for your Monday, rainfall amounts estimated or projected by Storm Tracker 13 may be between a half an inch to an inch or more. Just shows how much moisture is available and that could translate to precipitation and this much in the rain gauges. Not everyone's going to see these exact numbers, but just gives an indication of what we could 
could be in for today. Pushing this through to tomorrow, even greater rain chances with more moisture. You can tell the further north you go, the rain chances will be a little bit greater. So be prepared for some very heavy rain in the coming days, including today. It'll still be very warm and muggy, reaching 90 or above for much of the I-4 corridor. Tonight, evening showers and thunderstorms will fade out. On Tuesday, we will return to either side of 90 degrees with more clouds and more rain and storms. Rain chances will be elevated all week long. Temperatures won't stray too far from the seasonal average. Now, if you're here on vacation, you're seeing these high rain chances every day. Just keep in mind you want to get out early before the rain develops. We'll have more in less than 10 minutes. Over to Ryan now for traffic. And here's a live look at Storm Tracker 13 Doppler radar. Good Monday morning, 6.54, your current time. I'm Ryan Harper following breaking traffic news coming out of Volusia County. Here is a crash here along I-4 traveling westbound uh, just past Saxon Boulevard, placing this in Deltona. And all of your lanes are currently blocked. All traffic being forced off onto Saxon Boulevard as it stands right now. Volusia County Sheriff's Office issued an update saying that uh, there were multiple people injured in this particular crash, at least three. And this crash involves some entrapment and a rollover involved in this vehicle there as as well. So it looks like this could be closed for some time. I recommend if you can avoid I-4 as early as you possibly can, maybe back in the Orange City area at State Road 472. You can take that to US 1792, which is going to be your best bet as an alternate for I-4 westbound in general right now. And you can take that maybe all the way south to Dirksen Drive or to Berry Avenue or maybe even further south to the Sanford area. But if that's where your travels are taking you into Seminole County, I recommend trying to avoid I-4 essentially between State Road 472 and Saxon Boulevard because because all traffic is again being forced off onto Saxon at this point. This update brought to you by Mullinax Ford. Once a week, a local single mom packs up her kids and heads to church. But along the way, she picks up nearly a half a dozen other young people from across Central Florida in an effort to keep teens out of trouble on the weekends. News 13's Bailey Myers introduces us to today's Everyday Hero. On a good day, these teens, they're all filled up. Every Sunday morning, Samantha Green packs her car with teens. Seatbelt. For two years now, Green, a local nurse who works at the Juvenile Detention Center in Orange County, has been trying to help young people who grow up in a more troubled part of the community, and she says it's become her passion. For one day out of the week, they are occupied with positive things versus, you know, having to make adult decisions as a child. Although it's a tight fit, <laughs> all the students she picks up on the weekends say they look forward to their time with the nurse who has become their mentor. It's just strange to think that there would be a person who would help you and not in not a negative way or want to see you fail. If anything, she wants to always see us succeed in what we do. Green says watching their personal growth makes it all worth it. And she hopes more people take a turn to walk in her shoes. To be that one caring adult that a child might need to be able to succeed. Even if you only reach one, um, it'll still be worth it. Samantha Green, Everyday Hero. Reporting in Orange County, I'm Bailey Myers, News 13. Now, if you know somebody in your community who you think is an everyday hero, let us know about them. Just head over to our website at mynews13.com slash everyday hero and submit your hero. Time now for a look at what's happening in our community, sponsored by Todd Minor Law. Closed captioning is brought to you by New Teeth Now. New Teeth Now from Florida Dental Implants can help you find the joy of living again all in one day. I'm Todd Miner. When you hire me to handle your car, truck, or motorcycle accident case, you also get my team of former insurance company professionals. And everything we learned on the insurance side, we bring to your side. So call me or visit ToddMinerLaw.com. This is our summer vacation. This is our day at the beach. This 
is how we cool off. And this is the new 2018 Acura TLX. Hurry to the Acura Summer Performance Event for some of the most exciting offers of the year. Lease the 2018 Acura TLX for $329 a month for well-qualified customers. Visit your Acura dealer today. Don't you think it's time to find your new look at Saxon Clark? It's Saxon Clark sale of the summer. Right now, on a first-come, first-served basis, find special deals like this fine furniture five-piece king-size bedroom set, normally $72.99, now just $34.99. Plus, get up to 50% off all Tommy Bahama outdoor sets. Buy now and also get one year 0% same as cash financing. At Saxon Clark, where you can see it, feel it, and live it. Travel in style with Happy Limousine. Our first-class limousine service will help make a night to remember. There's enough room for everyone in your party, no matter how large or small. Download our convenient app and book a ride with just a few taps. Happy Limousine has a vehicle for every occasion, including super stretch limos, sedans, and party buses. Use the app or call Happy Limousine today to schedule your next night out. I'm Todd Miner. I've built my firm with the strong belief that you can't fight big insurance companies with inexperienced attorneys. So if you've been injured in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident, call me today or visit ToddMinerLaw.com and get a former insurance company attorney on your side. Local forecast is brought to you.